Good morning, Recast. Thanks for joining us as we worship the Lord this morning. We've just got a couple of quick announcements for you. First off, thank you so much to all of you that filled out the survey last week about how we should begin resuming our meetings here in the building. The elders spent a couple hours this week reviewing all of those comments, and we've looked at the laws and the executive orders related to how and when we can gather, and we are excited to tell you that we're tentatively planning to get together on June 14th for the first time. There's still a lot of details that have to be worked out related to that. We're going to be working on that in the next couple of weeks. So just pray for Pastor Don, pray for the staff, uh, for wisdom as we think through those details and put together a plan to keep everyone safe as we uh, get together and gather for what will be the first time in a couple of months. To keep you up to date as those details unfold, Pastor Don is going to do a Facebook Live on Tuesday, June 2nd in the evening. So if you want to tune into that, you will get more details as we finalize them. And we'll also be sending details out in the eCast as well. So we're excited about that. Also wanted to let you know that for our connection time this week, we have Recast Seniors doing our connection time. So you'll get to see them a little bit, learn a little bit about them. Also wanted to let you know that in each one of their yards, we have big, large celebration banners for them. And we'd encourage you to stop by their houses and sign the back to, to give them a little lift as, as their entire senior year's kind of been turned upside down. Last thing I want to make you aware of is that Pastor Don and his family are on vacation this week. So we hope and pray that they're getting some much needed rest. So if you have any needs this week, please call the church office number or email me at spencer at recastchurch.com and we'll make sure that we, we take care of you however you might need. And finally here we have Bill Smith doing our sermon this morning. I'm excited to hear him. I hope you are too. So we're, we're glad that you've tuned in to join us this morning, and we're excited to see what the Lord will do in your hearts through Bill as he brings the word this morning. Good morning, uh, Recast. Uh, thanks for tuning in this morning. Uh, as Spencer said, I, I'm Bill Smith, and I feel privileged to be able to bring the word to you, something that's really blessed me uh, in my walk with Christ, and I pray that it's a blessing to you all too. Um, I sure do miss all of you so much, and really looking forward to gathering together. Um, so, uh, yeah, uh, so this morning uh, I'm going to be speaking uh, on a message entitled, Beautiful Savior from Isaiah 61. And I'm going to go back a few years, uh, back into the 70s. I was in high school. And uh, one of the bands that I listened to uh, was the Doobie Brothers. And they came out with a song that really surprised me, and I really, really liked the song a lot. And it, it's called Jesus is Just All Right. I don't know. Raise your hand if you <laughs> remember that song. Um, the lyrics go this way, and I, I certainly won't sing it for you. That would be bad. But um, the lyrics go, Jesus is just all right with me. Jesus is just all right. Oh, yeah. Jesus is just all right with me. Jesus is just all right. I don't care what they may say. I don't care what they may do. I don't care what they may say. Jesus is just all right. Oh, yeah. Now, I know I didn't do that justice at all, but I don't know if you remember that song, but when I heard that, first of all, I was kind of shocked, like, the Doobie Brothers are singing about Jesus? And I, and I remember hearing that song, and I remember thinking, yeah, Jesus is just all right with me, too. And you know, I, I didn't know Jesus at that time, but everything that I had heard about Jesus up to that point uh, in my life, the little bits and pieces um, that I had gathered um, as a child growing up. I didn't grow up in the church, uh, but I thought, man, this, this Jesus, he must have been a pretty cool guy. And yeah, he's all right with me too. And, and yet, I, I didn't know Jesus. I didn't know his full story. Um, but at the age of 20, I learned that not only was Jesus a cool guy, but that he was a mighty savior because I saw Jesus rescue my best friend and set him free from uh, drug and alcohol addiction, and it was miraculous. And he told me that it was Jesus in his life. And he began to help me understand the story of Jesus, and I asked Jesus to be my Savior, to come into my life, and he set me 
free as well. Um, now, many years later, uh, because that was, that was back in the 70s when I came to Christ, um, not only do I know that Jesus is a really cool guy, if I can put it that way, but that he is a beautiful Savior. And this morning, uh, I would like to explore with you just how beautiful Jesus truly is. So grab your Bible, uh, open up your device, and turn with me to Isaiah chapter 61. And we're going to go verses 1 through 3. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to grant to those who mourn in Zion, to give them a beautiful headdress instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the garment of praise instead of a faint spirit, that they may be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. The word of the Lord. Now this is, this is a pro prophecy of Jesus as we're going to see as we, we dig deeper into this. And, and it's, it's a beautiful description of who he is and what he came to do and what he can do in our lives. And from this text, we're going to see um, how beautiful Jesus is. We'll see that he brings the good news into our lives. <clears throat> Excuse me. That he heals our broken hearts. That he brings freedom into our lives. That he is a chain breaker. That he brings us into the favor and blessings of God. That he comforts those who mourn. That he gives beauty for ashes. He gives the oil of joy for the spirit of mourning. He gives a garment of praise and takes away the spirit of heaviness. This is our beautiful Savior. And I, I pray um, that this encourages you this morning. Uh, I would like to pray uh, as we head into our worship time. <clears throat> pray with me, will you? Father, just uh, thank you so much that... Uh, you love us, and thank you so much for your beautiful word. And Lord, I thank you for our Recast family and any, anyone who's tuning in with us this morning. Um, just pray that you would meet each one right where they're at, um, and that you would uh, do something special in our hearts, that you would show us your beauty and your glory. And through our time together in your word, uh, Father, that it would, it would bring some... Uh, some extra hope and peace and, and joy, and uh, Father, that it would cause us to want to know you, Lord, in deeper ways. So I just pray that you would bless your word and bless our time together this morning. In Jesus' name, amen.
How's it going, Recast? My name is David. I'm the... <laughs> I forgot what my title was. Uh, I'm the youth director here at uh, Recast, and today for Connection Time, we're going to be going out and interviewing a few of our graduating high school seniors to talk about their next steps in life, uh, where they're going to be going to school, and how you can be praying for them. So, let's go. I'm here six feet apart from Mr. Noah Jansen. Ish. Uh, ish. We're getting, <laughs> we're close. Um, but not too close. So, Noah, where are you going to school? What will you be studying slash doing there? Uh, I'm going to Alma College in Alma, Michigan, which is, you know, there. And um, I will be studying integrative um, physiology and health sciences, which is a type of pre-med pro program. Um, a pre-professional and then hopefully going to go on to a graduate school to become um, a sort of orthopedic PA working in the sports field. Awesome. And then I will be playing football at Alma as well. I was going to say, I thought you missed something. <laughs> yeah. All right, what is the thing about school that you're most excited about? Oh, playing football. Hands down. Not even close. I am, sense. I'm so excited for the fall. Will they have football this that year? That is what we're going to pray about. That's the next question. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> so, what can we be praying for you about in your transition to school? That I can even go to school in the fall. I mean, I just, I've been looking forward to this since the beginning of senior year. And I just, I'm really excited to get going and move on to the next chapter of my life. And I'm just, I don't, it would be great if you guys could pray that this next chapter of my life actually happens within, you know, a reasonable amount of time. All right. Well, I'm going to pray for him now, but... There you have it, folks. So be praying for Noah in the next couple months, and I'm going. Let's do it. God, uh, thanks for Noah and for his time at Madawan, the time that uh, he served at Recast, the influence that he is to his friends and, and those around him. Um, I pray that you'd, you'd open up stuff as as we keep going with Corona, and it, it's definitely a frustrating time, God. And and uh, I pray that you'd, you'd uh, just heal us, that there'd be there'd be a cure to this thing, and then also um, that. No, we'll just have a really smooth transition, that Corona wouldn't affect that, that you'd be able to play football in the fall, and that um, stuff would go smoothly and healthily for him. You're going to pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> How's it going, guys? Here with Anna Knoll, another one of our graduating high school seniors. Anna, where are you going to be going to college? Um, I'm planning on going to Grand Valley next fall, and I'll be studying history. Sweet. All right, what is the thing you are most excited about going to college or finishing high school? Um, I'm most excited about um, the specific history courses that I'll be taking because in high school we only have a couple of different history courses. So in college I feel like there'll be more of a variety and I'll get to learn a lot of new things. Awesome. All right, and then what is one way that we as a church can be praying for you during your transition and, and during your first year at school here? Uh, probably the most nervous thing that I'm about, that I'm nervous about is um, making new friends. I have one friend that will be going with me um, there that I'll know, but I don't really know anybody else going there, so just um, making new friends that will have a good influence on me. Okay, yeah. Uh, well, can I pray for you now then? Yeah. All right, sweet. God, uh, thanks for Anna and for her time here at Madawan, here at Recast. Pray that you bless her in her next steps at Grand Valley. Um, to make good friends and um, that they together walk closely with you, Lord. Um, amen. Amen. Okay. Sweet. Thank you for sitting down. Yep, of course. I hope I was loud enough. Was I loud enough? Uh, yes, I think so. Okay. We should be good. All right. How's it going, folks? Uh, here with our final senior, Caitlin. Uh, where are you going to be going this fall, and what will you be studying? Yeah, I'm going to uh, Liberty University. I'm doing it online, and I want to major in accounting and minor in evangelism. Nice. And then what is the thing you're most excited for about starting school? Um, probably actually getting out of my comfort zone and meeting new people and making new friends. And what's one thing the church can be praying for you about? Uh, my time management. It's pretty shaky, so I could definitely improve on that. Sounds good. Mind if I prefer you now? Yeah. All right, sweet. 
God, thanks for Caitlin and um, for bringing her to Recast. And I pray that as she starts this next phase of her life, that um, she use that as a chance to learn how to how to manage time better. Um, thank you for um, for providing an avenue for her to further her education. And I pray that she enjoys the entire experience. Lord, you ever pray? You know, thanks for sitting down with me. Sweet. <laughs> That's all we got. You did oh. great.
Hey, uh, welcome back. Um, I, I just got to tell you uh, straight out that uh, this is kind of a strange experience for me. I'm standing here in Recast Church, and, and it's Spencer in the camera and, and David up in the sound booth. So uh, I'm trying to picture you all sitting in your living room. Uh, you know, I've been listening to some of the... Uh, uh, services in my bathrobe, but uh, anyway, uh, so again, thank you uh, so much for tuning in, and I would just like to uh, say a prayer, and then we're going to dive into Isaiah chapter 61 this morning. Father, again, we thank you for your word, and uh, I pray that um, your spirit will give us understanding, um, that you will speak to us through this passage and that we will see what a beautiful Savior you are. And Father, I pray that you would bless every individual listening and every family. Uh, Lord, thank you that you know all of our needs. You know right where we're at, and you love us, and you know how much we need you. And I just pray that um, you would just continue to work in all of our lives, helping us to grow in your love and to know you in deeper ways. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So uh, this morning we are in Isaiah 61, and I mentioned in the introduction that um, this is a prophecy of Jesus, and we're, we're going to see um, that there is no doubt about that um, as we're going to go into Luke chapter 4. Uh, this prophecy was written 700 years before Jesus even came to this earth, uh, being born in that, that manger in Bethlehem. Uh, but let's go to Luke chapter 4. And Jesus, the setting is Jesus has begun his ministry. Um, he's, he's begun to uh, share uh, the good news of who he is and, and healing. And, and um, so we find him in Luke chapter 4, verse 14. And that's where we're going to pick it up. He's visiting his hometown of Nazareth. Um, follow along with me, uh, starting in verse 14. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit to Galilee, and a report about him went through all the surrounding country. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified by all. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as was his custom, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He enrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim the good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind and to set at liberty those who are oppressed to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. And he began to say to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. And so uh, we have the testimony of Jesus himself on this, saying that this Isaiah chapter 61 passage was a prophecy of who he is, who Jesus is, and what he came to do. He literally said, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. So, so back to Isaiah 61, we know that this is speaking about Jesus. Um, Jesus wants to take these beautiful words and he wants to fulfill them in our lives. This 
in a nutshell, is what Jesus came to do and what he can do in our lives. So I would like to explore uh, with you now the work of our beautiful Savior. And we'll start in Isaiah 61 and take this a verse at a time. The first thing that I want you to see in this passage is that he is the one who brings the good news into our world and into our lives. Isaiah 61.1, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. Our world needs good news right now more than ever, doesn't it? A lot of craziness going on, uh, a lot of fear, a lot of worry, uh, a lot of heartache, a lot of uncertainty. Our world is ripe for good news. And I, what I want to say to you all is that Jesus is the good news. He is the ultimate good news. Jesus himself said in Matthew 5, 3, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. It says that he came to bring good news to the poor. Who are the poor that he's, he's speaking of in Matthew 5, 3? Well, he's speaking in a spiritual sense, and he's speaking of us. He's speaking of um, those who realize how empty and bankrupt they really are without him, that they are poor in spirit. And Jesus is the one who brings us into the kingdom of God. Because Jesus came and sacrificed his life on the cross, we can be forgiven. Because he came, we can become children of God. Because he came, we can be in his eternal kingdom, the kingdom of heaven. This is the ultimate good news. Jesus is the good news. And it's for all of us. Look with me at... Uh, Lou, or excuse me, 2 Corinthians 8, 9. It says this, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that you by his poverty might become rich. With Jesus in our lives, we can experience the good news every day. We can have this ultimate hope, knowing that our future is secure, that Jesus has made the way for us to know God and to be children of God and to be in his heaven forever. Jesus is the good news. The second thing I want you to see from Isaiah chapter 61, verse 1, is that he is the one who heals the brokenhearted. Reading down a little bit further in verse 1, it says, He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. Jesus came as the great physician. In Luke chapter 5, 31 and 32, Jesus spoke these words. And Jesus answered them, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Jesus is making a reference to himself as a physician, as one who can bring healing. And specifically in our text, it's talking about Jesus healing our broken hearts. To bind up the broken heart. This word bind in the Hebrew means to wrap firmly. So it's the idea of of uh, wrapping up a wound, but it, it means to bind a wound so that it can heal. In fact, um, this same word, bound, bind up, the Hebrew word in Isaiah chapter 3, verse tra uh, 7, is translated healer. So when it talks about binding up the brokenhearted, he's talking about bringing healing to the brokenhearted. Now, this word brokenhearted in the Hebrew is actually two separate words. And the first word uh, means to burst, to break in pieces. And I don't know if you've ever experienced that in your heart before. Um, this idea of a broken heart, I have in my lifetime. Um, and it's a tough place to be. And I know even now some of you um, who are listening to this message are experiencing that broken heart. 
And Jesus, again, he is the great physician who can bring healing. Um, the second part of this Hebrew word brokenhearted is simply the word for heart. Um, so it can mean our beating heart, but it also um, is used figuratively speaking of our feelings, um, our will, even our intellect, and, and it's used for the center of anything. So it's really talking about the center of our being, our, our inside. Um, you know, we can look good on the outside, but we can really be broken on the inside. If you feel broken on the inside, there is good news. Jesus is the healer of the brokenhearted. Look at Psalm 147.3 with me. It's speaking of our, our wonderful uh, God, our Father, our, our Lord and Savior. It says in verse 3, He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. You know, when I read this, it made me think of a friend of mine. I met him 18 years ago. He had just gotten out of prison. And he was driving by our building and he saw Youth for Christ. And he had a heart for youth and he loved Christ. And so he came in and this is how I met my friend. He began to share his story with me. He grew up thinking his grandparents were his mom and dad. And he had an aunt who would often come to the house. Uh, well, when my friend was a teenager, his grandparents sat him down and his aunt was there. And they said, we need to tell you the truth. We are not your mom and dad. We're your grandparents. And who you thought was your aunt is your mom. And he was, he was devastated. He was brokenhearted. Um, he didn't know what to say. He felt rejected, abandoned. Why didn't my mom want me? Why did my grandparents lie to me and tell me they were my mom and dad? And he began to act out. He began to fight and get in trouble. And he ended up committing some crimes and ended up getting arrested and sentenced to 18 years in prison. And he went into prison bitter and angry and brokenhearted. But while he was there, someone gave him a Bible and he began to read the story of Jesus, our beautiful Savior. And within about five years into his prison sentence, he received this beautiful Savior into his life. And for the next 13 years, he grew and he walked out his faith in that prison and his life was transformed. He came out uh, a loving, gracious person. And he's one of the most upbeat, happiest people I know, full of love. And, and yeah, Jesus can heal any broken heart. He can heal your broken heart. If you need this kind of healing, seek him as your healer. The next thing I want to look at in Isaiah 61.1 is that he is a mighty deliverer. Reading down a little bit further in our text, it says that he came to proclaim liberty to the captives, the opening of the prison to those who are bound. This word liberty means freedom, which is a beautiful word. We've, we've all kind of maybe feeling like we've lost our freedom a little bit. Um, you know, being asked to stay at home and, and uh, you know, freedom is such a beautiful thing. And this word captive simply means prisoners. Well, who are these captives that Jesus came to set free? All of us, human beings. We all need to be set free. We need to be set free from sin and from evil. 1 John 3.8 says this, Whoever makes a practice of sinning is of the devil, for the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the works of the devil. These are strong words. But the reality is, is that sin can trap us and make us captives to evil. The devil is the originator of sin. Sin brings heartache and ruin. And we need to be set free from that. We need to be set free 
also from the penalty of sin. Jesus came to free us from sin and darkness and evil. In my past experience, I, I know what it, it is to be trapped in sin. Proverbs 5, and 23 say this, the iniquities of the wicked ensnare him and he is held fast in the cords of his sin. He dies for lack of discipline because of his great folly. He has been led astray. Now, when I read these passages of how sin can entrap us, um, it reminded me of another good friend of mine, Mike. Uh, I first met Mike about 15 years ago. Uh, he came to the juvenile home with his church, uh, who was uh, helping with the service that night. And I saw this brother up singing with their choir and so joyful and, and just beaming with God's love. And Mike and I started a friendship, and, and uh, Mike was a minister in his church. And he had such a heart to share the gospel, and he was such a godly man. But one time, uh, we sat down for coffee, and, he, and, and I said, Mike, share your story with me. I don't know much about your past. And he shared with me some, some heartaches from his childhood, um, how his dad had taken his own life, and, and how that put Mike on a dark path, and, and it led to drug addiction, and he told me that he had been a crack cocaine addict for 10 years living on the streets. I, I couldn't hardly believe it. It, was, it didn't match up with who he was. That I just thought Mike had loved the Lord his, his whole life. And crack cocaine is, is a very addictive drug. But when he met Jesus, when he finally opened his heart to Jesus, he was set free from that addiction. And now he, he loves the Lord and he's serving. Um, if you have something in your life that, that seems to have you bound, uh, know that Jesus can break those chains, that he can set you free, that he is the chain breaker. Jesus himself said in John eight thirty six, so if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. He is a mighty deliverer. He's the beginning of freedom. I know for me, when he came into my life at the age of 20, he set me free from alcohol and drug addictions and, and, and many other things. And, and do I still struggle with, with things like all of us? Yes, but I know uh, where the freedom is. I know where the transformation and the healing and the forgiveness, and it's all in Jesus. Uh, just... Be honest with him. He already knows all about it. Uh, he knows us inside and out, and he loves us. He shed his blood for us, and, and he can change and transform that in you. He can set you free. Don't believe the devil's lie that you can never be free from what has you in its grip. Seek him, because he is a mighty deliverer. The fourth thing I want you to see from this passage in Isaiah is that Jesus is the one who brings us into the favor and blessings of God. Moving into verse 2 of Isaiah 61, it says, He came to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And th this word favor in, in the Hebrew is a beautiful word, and it means delight, especially shown. So if you really delight in someone um, I, I know uh, delighting in your child, or now we have grandchildren, and, and delighting in our grandchildren, you just want to bless them, don't you? You want to do nice things for them. And, and Jesus brings us into the favor uh, and delight of God. He brings us into the blessing of God. When I was lost and I didn't know Jesus, I was separated. I didn't know the blessings of God. I didn't have the hope and the peace and the joy that I now have. But when Jesus came into my life, I began to discover his blessings. And the more I read in his word, I began to understand more and more of the beautiful things that he wanted to do in our lives. Ephesians 1.3 says this, 
Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ Jesus with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Isn't that beautiful? Every spiritual blessing. How do we find out what those blessings are? By, by reading his word, by being in his word, and knowing what his promises are. These blessings include the blessing of forgiveness, the blessing of being his child, the blessing of God's love in our heart, the blessing of his grace, the blessing of hope, the blessing of eternal life, the blessing of heaven, the blessing of an ever-present help who will never leave us nor forsake us, the blessing of peace, the blessing of joy. This list goes on and on. Jesus, because he paid for our sins and he bridged that gap, and through Jesus we can have a relationship with our creator, he brings us into the beautiful blessings of God. Now, it's interesting when uh, we read uh, when Jesus read this prophecy in the synagogue in Nazareth, he left out a part of verse 2. He left out this part, and the day of vengeance of our God. Jesus left that out. He didn't read that. He skipped it, and he moved down uh, to the rest uh, of verse 3. Why would Jesus leave that part of the scripture out? Well, it's because he came to free us from that judgment. It says in uh, John 3, 17, For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world through him might be saved. Jesus didn't come to bring judgment. He, be, he came to bring freedom and release to us. Beautiful promise in Romans 8, 1, you know, um, we all mess up, uh, we, all, we all sin, and that stinking enemy can come along and just beat us down with it, but a beautiful promise is in Romans 8.1, and it says this, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. If Jesus is in your life and he is your Savior, he took that judgment upon himself at the cross so that we don't have to face that judgment. Because of Jesus, our salvation is secure. And he frees us. We don't have to dread the day that we will stand before God because we are forgiven. He came to free us from the judgment that sin brings. The fifth thing I want you to see from this passage of Isaiah 61 is that he is the one who brings comfort to those who mourn. Look at uh, verse 3. To grant to those who mourn in Zion to give them a beautiful headdress instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the garment of praise instead of a faint spirit. This word for mourn, uh, it means to lament. Uh, we probably wouldn't say uh, I'm lamenting uh, but it's, it's uh, expressing grief. Uh, it's expressing sorrow. Wow, our world is full of grief, isn't it? We've experienced that. All of us have. Yeah, even in our own families. We grieve over our own failures, disappointments, and regrets. We grieve because of guilt and shame in our own lives. We grieve over broken relationships. We grieve over loved ones who are struggling. We grieve over children who have strayed. We grieve because of sickness, disease, and death. This list also goes on and on. The good news, though, is that Jesus gives us beauty for ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the garment of praise instead of a faint spirit. Jesus said this in Matthew 5, 4, Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. He knows your sorrow. He knows your heartaches. He knows your pain. In Psalm 56, 8, it talks about him seeing every teardrop. 
that you've ever shed. That's how near he is. And Jesus is the great comforter. He said this, his invitation in Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 was this, come to me all you who are weary and burdened and I will give you rest. He says, come to me just the way you are with all your struggles and all of your heartaches. Talk to him about it. Seek him. Seek his healing. He can give you that rest, that peace. Well, wrapping this up, I want to think about how does Jesus bring comfort to those who mourn uh, based on Isaiah 61, 3. We see three things here. The first thing is, is that he brings us out of the ash heap and crowns us with beauty. Uh, so uh, it says to give them a beautiful headdress instead of ashes. Well, ashes in the Old Testament uh, were a symbol of deep grief and mourning. Uh, after Job had lost everything, it says in Job 2.8 that he sat in ashes. In 2 Samuel 3.19, um, Tamar had been a, terribly abused by her own brother. And, and verse 19 of, of 2 Samuel 13 says this, And Tamar put ashes on her head. And tore the long robe that she wore, and she laid her hand on her head and went away crying loudly as she went. So ashes is this symbol of, of mourning. Um, you know, and it wasn't that long ago that, that uh, when people were in mourning, they would wear black clothing or a black armband as a symbol of mourning. How often have we been in this ash heap? Um, in our lives, this, this morning. But Jesus wants us to come to him in our morning. He wants us to come to him in our sadness. He wants to lift us out of this ash heap. He wants to comfort and heal us. Now, I really like the way the New King James translates this, um, verse 3. So I, I want to I wanna read it to you. Um, from the New King James, it says, To console those who mourn in Zion, to give beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Jesus gives beauty for ashes. Now the ESV speaks of a beautiful headdress. The NIV translates it this way, To bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes. And this is a picture of, of Jesus taking off, uh, if you will, those, those mourning clothes, uh, take, cleaning the ashes off us, taking, helping us deal with our pain and our heartache, and clothing us with hope and life and joy and peace. And he can do that. He's done it in my life. He can do it in anyone's life. Now, um, continuing in verse 3, the second thing that he does is it says that he gives us the oil of gladness instead of mourning. Well, Jesus is the ultimate source of joy. Oil in, in the scriptures is a symbol of the Holy Spirit. In Galatians 5.22, it talks about the fruit of the Spirit is being joy. So this joy is supernatural. It comes from God. It's not something we muster up ourselves. It's experienced in a close connection with God, a close relationship. Psalm 1611 says this, You make known to me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. It's in his presence as we connect with him. Psalm 21.6, for you make him most blessed forever. You make him glad with the joy of your presence. And again, this joy comes from uh, a living connection with our Father in heaven, with our Lord and Savior Jesus. So, some years ago I met a young man in the juvenile home and he was an alcoholic, uh, a bad alcohol teenager, um, had been through a lot of heartache in his life and, and he would use the alcohol to kill the pain. 
he uh, began to learn the story of Jesus while he was in the juvenile home, but he wasn't ready to uh, open his heart to the Savior. So he got out, and uh, the next time I heard from him was a collect uh, a phone call from the county jail. And he had been arrested. Uh, he got out, started uh, the juvenile home, started drinking again. Um, one night he was, he was drunk. He had run out of money, and he wanted more alcohol. He broke into an a, a elderly woman's house, and he robbed her. Uh, to get that money for alcohol. Uh, it snowed that night. He had walked uh, to his cousin's house. The police tracked him in the snow and woke him up on his cousin's couch and took him to the county jail. And, and uh, I started meeting with him in the county jail and kind of walking with him through the trial process. But while, while he was in the county jail, he realized that Jesus was his only hope and he opened his heart to Jesus. Then he found out he was sentenced to 10 years. That was a tough blow, 10 years in prison for what he had done. But he wasn't going there alone. He was going with Jesus. And so he got sent off to prison. It was a ways from Kalamazoo. So we began to write back and forth. And I sent him a a card, and it had different names of Jesus on that card. And he wrote me a letter back, and this letter just floored me. I want to read what um, he wrote in this letter to you. Uh, He said, Dear Bill, my brother in Christ and friend for life, I won't even ask how you are doing because I know you're doing great. How can you not with God on your side? I am so glad you could find time to write me. Your letter brought tears to my eyes and wonderful joy to my heart. Thank you. I really enjoyed the card you sent. I was so inspired by it. I had to say a prayer using all his names. Jesus is my Prince of Peace, my morning star, light of my life, and all the above. Making Jesus number one in my life is the best thing I could have ever done, and I thank you for that. It may have taken me a while, but I am here in God's arms, never to let go. Here's the part I really want you to hear. This is what floored me. He has brought so much peace into my mind and joy to my heart that I forget I am in prison sometimes. When I read that, I like, ah, I had been to the prison where he was at to visit him. That's miraculous right there. That that is the healing and joy that Jesus can bring. He can take away uh, that garment of mourning and give us the garment of praise, as it says in Isaiah 61, 3. The garment, he gives us the garment of praise instead of a faint spirit. And this... Hebrew word for garment was really interesting. In fact, it, it's only used, this one Hebrew word is only used once in the Old Testament, and it, not the normal word for clothing. It's, it's uh, a word that means a vestment. So it's, it's special clothing. It could be um, the robe that a priest would wear, ornate and beautiful, or or sometimes you look at choirs and the beautiful robes they wear, or even a bride on her wedding day wearing that beautiful wedding dress. That's a vestment. And so he, he can take away this, this mourning, and he can clothe us with this special garment of praise. And this, this word praise here literally means a, a song, a hymn of praise to God. And he can put a new song in our hearts. Psalm 40 verse 3 says, he put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. Psalm 42, 8, by day the Lord commands his steadfast love and at night his song is with me, a prayer to the God of my life. He can put a new song in our hearts. So many times I have sat down uh, grieving, um, feeling that, that broken heartedness and And just poured out my heart before him and opened his word and met with him and and told him what was going on. And and all of a sudden, something shifts in our hearts and there's a healing and he takes that grief away and he puts this new song in our hearts. This is our beautiful Savior. He is the one who can give us beauty for ashes. The oil of joy instead of mourning, the garment of praise instead of the spirit of happiness. 
knowing that Jesus is the good news, knowing that he is the healer of the brokenhearted, knowing that he is the one who brings true freedom, the one who brings us into the favor and blessing of God, the one who comforts those who mourn. Come to Jesus. If you haven't opened your heart to the Savior, why don't you do it today? Just tell him you need him. Ask him to come into your life. He proved his love at the cross. He died for our sins. He loves you. He wants to be in your life. This is the beginning of healing. Jesus coming into our lives. Won't you ask him to come into your life if that's your need today? Come to Jesus. Make sure he's your savior. Number two, in closing, seek him daily. Learn who he is. Learn the promises of his word. Uh, Learn more of his beauty and glory. Seek him daily. Number three, bring him your heartaches. Bring him your fears. Learn to be honest with him in prayer. He already knows all our struggles. And seek his healing because he is still the great physician. And number four, seek to walk with him in unbroken fellowship. He really wants us uh, to be his disciples, to walk and live our lives in union with him. And he is so worthy. He loves you. He died for you. He lives for you. Let him be your life. Thank you so much for uh, being part of our service this morning and uh, hang in there. Uh, we are, we are going to be back together um, in the not so far uh, near future. Um, and like Spencer said, you'll be hearing more, more about that. Um, but uh, we sure do miss y'all, and I know uh, you all miss each other. And, uh, but, you know, my prayer has been that during this time of more isolation that we would spend more time uh, in prayer seeking God and that he would do something special in our lives through this. So um, thank you so much for tuning in uh, this morning to our service. I want to close with a prayer, and then uh, you can go get that second, third cup of coffee or, or whatever it may be. Let's pray. Lord, uh, thank you uh, that you are a beautiful Savior, uh, that you love us, that you are the ultimate good news, uh, that you are the one who can set anyone free, that you uh, are the one who heals the brokenhearted, that uh, you are the one who comforts those who mourn. You are beautiful Savior. Lord, if there's anyone even um, listening uh, right now, um, even now, Lord, I pray that if they're ready, they would just cry out to you, Jesus, I need you. I open my heart to you. I ask that you would forgive my sins. I believe that you paid for them at the cross, and I receive you as my Lord and Savior into my life. I thank you, Father, you're hearing anyone that may be crying that out to you in their hearts. And just please help that one to know that they love you. Um, Father, help us to realize that our true hope and peace and joy is in you. Not in this world, not in our jobs, um, not in how much money we have or whatever it may be. That you are the true source of life and joy. And I just thank you for giving us this beautiful picture of who you are today. Uh, we praise you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, if you, if you prayed that prayer with me, and we, we don't normally do that um, as far as an invitation like that, but, but if, if you're feeling this and, and, and you invite Jesus to be your Lord and Savior today, would you let us know? Um, you, can, you can email us here at the church, uh, Pastor Don or... Pastor Spencer would love to hear that. Uh, maybe you have questions, you want to learn more about that. Uh, please get in contact with us. We, we would love to talk to you more about that. So uh, with that, God bless you all. And uh, I hope that uh, I will see you here in this big, uh, empty uh, auditorium soon. So God bless. Thank you.